Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, welcome back to another episode in this vlog series. So my name is Andy and this week's topic is going to be on creative non-fiction. So there should have been a blog post done by William and Amy on this. So please go and check that out if you haven't already. But um, a lot of you may have well found me from the blog post. So welcome. So creative non-fiction. So let's get started. So creative non-fiction is essentially um, a, a literary genre. Um that tries to do two things. So these are the two sort of key things. Remember? So it tries to entertain as well as inform. Um, so it uses sort of literary techniques, so styles of plot, dialogue, sort of um, language uh, to craft something which is factually accurate. Um, so it sort of differs from journalism in the sense that journalism is kind of there just to kind of report the facts, will often try and present both sides of an argument. But... Creative non-fiction is uh, there to entertain, but at the same time use accurate information to inform the reader. So it's sort of a hybrid of sort of fiction and sort of journal journalism in that sense. So I thought what might be quite good for us to have a little look at first is a little example. So we have got, this is a well-known piece, you might well have heard of this guys. This is called The Man Who Mis Mistook His Wife for a Hat. Um, by Oliver Sacks. So Oliver Sacks is a very well-renowned uh, neurologist um, to work for many, many years, sort of studying people's brains and minds. Um, and this is a little collection of what he's produced from sort of real-life cases. Um, so we're going to actually start off and read a little bit of the story um, for the title of the collection, which is The Man Mistook His Wife for a Hat. So at this point here, we have a doctor called Dr. P. Um, he is in having an examination from Mr. Sachs um, in his office. Uh, and he has just shown him a magazine of uh, a Sahara Desert um, fold out. And so he's asking him to say what he sees. So I'll go ahead and read this now for you guys. So what do you see here? I asked. I see a river, he said, a little guest house with its terrace on the water. People were dining out on the terrace. I see coloured parasols here and there. He was looking, if it was looking, right off the cover into mid-air and confabulating non-existent features, as if the absence of features in the actual picture had driven him to imagine the river and the terrace and the colour parasols. I must have looked aghast, but he seemed to think he had done rather well. There was a hint of a smile on his face. He also appeared to have decided that the examination was over and started to look around for his hat. He reached out his hand and took hold of his wife's head, tried to lift it off, to put it on. He had apparently mistaken his wife for a hat. His wife looked as if she was used to such things. I can make no sense of what occurred in terms of conventional neurology or neuropsychology. In some ways, he seemed perfectly preserved and in others, absolutely, incomprehensibly devastated. How could he, on the one hand, mistake his wife for a hat and on the other function, as apparently he still did, as a teacher at the music school? I had to think to see him again and to see him in his own familiar habitat at home. Right there, guys. So there's a couple of bits going on here. So Sax has chosen to show this as a realised scene. So he could have just decided to just sort of report it in a sort of journalistic way. So he could have literally just been almost as if he's saying it from memory. So he could have started off with... I remember a time when a gentleman came into my office, he was having problems with what he said seemed to be his vision, um, and then I showed him uh, this magazine, this is the scene he said, he then um, went to leave and instead of taking his hat he grabbed hold of his wife's head. Um, now that wouldn't be as impactive as it is having it unfold sort of naturally in that. Um, it comes as sort of quite a surprise. You obviously at this point in the text you already realise something's not quite right with this gentleman. Um, and then but for him suddenly just to leave and then grab his wife's hat, having it in the real life scene sort of really makes it impactive. But it's also um, kind of an entertaining way because he's just about to leave um, and then the he shows how baffled he is as the doctor at the time. You know, he's really capturing what it was like for him in that moment. And then on the one spectrum, you've got him sort of aghast at, unbelieving what he's seeing but then the gentleman is just quite happily like oh I've done really well on this test um and you can't really kind of experience that with reporting so that's what's really sort of key in this he's kept the factual element of that examination true so he's told you what 
has happened and unveiled in that, but he's decided to do it in an entertaining way. So he's recreated that as sort of a realised narrative scene. So he's even got the dialogue in there. So he starts off, what do you see here? I ask, oh, I see a river. And then he goes to say what he unfolded. And I thought of what I found was a kind of really funny bit at the end is how he kind of surmised the absurdity of it, where he says, how could he, on the one hand, mistake his wife for a hat, and on the other, function, as apparently he still did, as a teacher at the music school. So it sort of creates this sort of bizarre contrasting image of this gentleman, you know, he's still, you kind of imagine him still going about his sort of everyday life teaching at the music school, but then you think, what sort of situations is he getting into? You know, is he trying to grab a clarinet, thinking that it's something and it's in fact it's something different it's like a child's head or something like that so it just creates this sort of bizarre sort of imagery there for you having that little bit at the end of that section um and what he also does really well in this is he chronalizes uh, everything sort of in order so rather than just taking you straight into it so this isn't the first scene in the text there is a little bit previous to this um where he goes to dr p then go for a an eye exam and he gets checked out he goes through the test and he talks you through that test almost as if you're in that test as well but then the guy says well your vision's perfectly fine but i think you might need to go and see a neurologist which is then when uh oliver Sachs then comes in and takes over the case um i believe it was called a visual agnosia that uh, dr p had if any of you are interested it was something to do where he couldn't distinguish certain shapes properly um but i won't say too much more so please go and check that out if you can so just to reiterate sort of the main bits which distinguish creative non-fiction from sort of other non-fictional or journalistic work is that it serves the purpose to entertain as well as inform so the factual information is there is your sort of groundwork to build upon so you are going to relay that to the audience but you're then using narrative sort of fictional techniques to then do that so you would create sort of in a similar way maybe like sax has you would create a realized scene you may work a bit more on dialogue on that so if dialogue is one of your stronger points you may really want to create a scene between two characters where they really sort of talk things through in a sort of a natural rhythmic way but then you're getting across the sort of factual information that you want to the reader or you might choose to do things in sort of a non-chronological order so you may decide to start something at the end and then work that back to the beginning for the reader and that and at the same time delivering those sort of key facts that you want so this week guys have a think about if there's anything that you already a topic which you already know quite a bit about have a think if there's anything that maybe you want to know a bit more about which can be even more fun so i did a piece a while back on it was called screen time and it was about sort of the effects that screen usage has on uh people now because we sort of are so sort of commonplace in our daily lives we're sort of constantly looking at a mobile phone a laptop a computer sort of a television screen and but what are the sort of the impacts on on sort of the neurological impacts on our brain sort of from doing that quite regularly so i did a piece on that and started it off with like a realized scene so you had a gentleman um who was sort of sat in this circle you believe he's sort of just having treatment for sort of a regular addiction but then it's revealed at the end of the scene that he's there for a screen addiction so that immediately sort of grabs the reader there and then i go back and sort of tell the story from that point onwards so i have a think this week about a topic that sort of you already know quite a bit about or something you want to learn more about guys um do a little bit of further research on that sort of take a few notes get some sort of key bits down and then think right how am i going to create a story from this so what bits there are that you want to convey to the reader so what are the key main facts from your research that you want to convey to the reader and then think how you're going to produce that into a realized scene so sort of a really good one is to sort of set it up between like two characters so if you especially if you really sort of excel at dialogue about that could be a great one so whether that is sort of two people interacting sort of on a park bench maybe they're even socially distancing at this point in time maybe they're separate from each other um have a think how you're going to convey those facts to the reader in the way that you would normally tell a story um and try and check out oliver Sacks, uh the man who would stick his wife for a hat if you can um have a great week guys take care see you all later bye now